Welcome back to the Paynes Creek Killings. We're about to explore the security room of the mansion, which, if nothing else, gives us access to three different rooms in the mansion. The nanny room, Trister's room, and the tea room. So we've really unlocked a pretty big new area. But before that, I just want to mention a couple housekeeping things I did. Apparently a while ago, I think in episode two, I messed up when I was editing one of the uh, notes. I was changing something to be a... I think five digit passcode instead of four and I accidentally changed the wrong one so I ended up making it so that I said in the notes the sheriff station's cabinet was a five digit code I think something like that anyway I think I've corrected that also if you remember I was a bit confused about this key yeah this one found in one of the lockers in the mansion I thought that this was the key to 40 black pine road and I went back to the me to the locker and didn't find any notes or anything like that, so I said I'd go back and look at what happened in the original episode when I first found the key, and I've done that. And I guess I was misremembering, because the note that tells us about 40 Black Pine Road, which is apparently where one of the servants, Dorothy, lives, um, is not connected to the key at all, as far as I could tell. It was They are found in completely different areas. It was just some diary of, I think, one of the other housekeepers mentioning that Dorothy asked them to like, stop by and clean their house. So it suggests that one of the housekeepers probably does have the key to Dorothy's place. Perhaps, maybe the nanny? Maybe the nanny's room key will allow me to find it? But yeah, the key that I found, I don't think there's any note associated with it, and it was inside of Bernard's locker. So I guess I should try it on every locked door in the mansion. But if I do that, I'll do it off camera. Security desk logbook. March 18th, 1994. Someone ran across the mansion, mansion's garden last night. A man about 5'5", five five, wearing a hooded sweater, climbed the fence wall into the garden. He proceeded to run to the backyard and crossed over the wall. What the hell? March 25th. A new stack of VHS tapes has arrived. Please use the new, sta the new tapes instead of recording it over existing ones. So would this be Scott? Running to the backyard to meet with Trisha in the thingy? April 6th, still 1994, came across a note by Magdalene Roberts. It was stuck between one of the old log books requesting the search of a missing security cam tape dated June 28th, 1975. Wait. 1975. Isn't that the date I was looking for? With regards to the combination locks in the confessional booth in the church? Wasn't it 7... Or was it 7-6? Was it 7 6 five? Uh, maybe it was 765, the three digits that were already entered. I'm not sure. Just in case, let's make a note of this. Missing security tape dated June, what was it, 29th? 1975? June 28th, 1975. Tag that with the mansion, of course, but also the church, just to remind me that maybe it's relevant. It seems the tape was never found. Yeah, it's an old tape. I mean, this is 1994, and that was back in 1975. We have a new security guard coming in today. His name is Samuel Green. Tom Parker will be his mentor to get him up to speed. Andrew came to the mansion at around 11 p.m. He was very drunk. Scott was called. He arrived around 11.15 p.m. and brought Andrew home. Today marks Tom Parker's 20th year since he started to work at the mansion. He'll be retiring from his position next month to take care of his ailing wife. A 
November 2nd. There's a strange tale going around Payne's Creek recently. Stephanie. A six-year-old girl got lost during Halloween night. Apparently, she followed some fireflies in the woods and could not get home. Her parents called the sheriff. They conducted a search but could not find her. Two hours later, Stephanie got home safe and sound. When asked how she found her way back, Stephanie said a young lady found her crying and brought her back. She did not know the lady's name, but remembered her being pretty and having long black hair. She was wearing a black dress similar to what the mansion maids wear at work. A strange thing is that when I asked around, all the maids said they were working that evening. Oh, fuck. Remember what I said about how I think this game might have supernatural leanings? Oh god, I think it's a ghost. Black hair, long black hair. Please don't crawl out of a TV. I'm still curious why some things are recorded here and some things aren't. Is that the place where you walk above? And then it goes to a locked door. That's what I was thinking where the attic was maybe somewhere over there. Because I want to get to that attic. Yeah, it's a map of the second floor. Ah, oh, cool. Can access it. Employee information, Bernard Hopkins. Date of birth, November 15th, 1944. There's their address. Might be important. Butler. Staff and house management. Eight hours a day, five days a week. Derek Tyler. Yep, they're the driver. Wanda Tyler. So they're related. Employee, housemaid. Due to sickness, she will stop work until she recovers. Andrew Reed. Oh, this is the person that's drunk all the time. Gartner Carpenter Handyman. Okay. So that's the person who Scott keeps covering their workload because they're drunk all the time. And most likely the person that stole that case of wine that went missing, right? Hardworking and trusted by Vivian Roberts. Dorothy Patterson. Oh, yeah. 40 Black Pine Road. Dorothy. That's Dorothy. Child care and housework. Longest hired employee at the Roberts family. Mary Martina is still waiting for photo. House number 10. Housemaid. Housework. Previously worked at Moon Cafe. House number 10. I don't have the key to that, do I? Because there's that one other house I have the key to that I can't seem to access. I have the... Oops. I have the key for... No, Home 7 is the other one I have a key for. On P Street. Pebble Lane or something. Is it going to tell me what it's for? <laughs> it doesn't, Christ. I should probably make a note for each of these keys. I only know because I saw it come from there. I wish I could attach a note to an object. Assuming the others don't say either. Nope, none of them say... 
All right then. We shall make notes. This will be a to-do. I have key for Trisha's room. Ah, double quote, sure, for the apostrophe. <laughs> Trisha's room, tea room, and, or tea rum. And what was the other one? Nanny room. Oh, crap. I'll probably remember, but just in case. And yep, this is where the map shows the attic is. Right here, past security. Just in case I never tried, what about that locker key? Oh right, this is a house entrance key. Bernard wasn't in the files, was he? Because I found the key in Bernard's place. Maybe it's to Bernard's house? Oh yeah, there's Bernard. Okay, so 31 Silver Lake Boulevard. I should note that. Key from Locker is probably for Bernard's home at 31 Silver Lake? Yeah. Put that as a to-do. Got so many places to go. Right. Um, let's see. So Trisha's room is on the second floor. This map's for the second floor. And there's the tea room right next to security. So tea room is here. There was a note from one of the servants saying that in the tea room they found a bundle of notes with bad saying bad things about Vivian, and they wondered why she kept them. Hopefully I can find those, because that could definitely be from the killer. Whoa, what? <laughs> Just like teleported me away. Found the murder weapon. That was a nasty fork. Hmm? What is that? Okay. Secret thingy with the clock. That needs a note. Need to place an item in the clock in the tea room. Label that with the mansion. Vivian Roberts Diary, ooh. All right, Friday, April 28th, 1972. Charles is running for election. I talked to Wilson and Edwards, and they have both agreed to support us. I don't think they're doing this to solely gain business benefits. Rather, they believe in Charles. Nevertheless, their support will help boost morale for our party. June 30th, 1972. It's our anniversary today. Charles invited me to my favorite restaurant. It was a complete surprise, and I was so happy. I thought he might have forgotten. After dinner, we spent the rest of the evening walking along the beach. We talked as if we were teenagers in love. I could not remember the last time I felt this carefree. 
August 9th, same year. Magdalene is coming. What should I do? She's always asking when we'll be having kids. I don't think I'm ready yet, not when I'm still recovering from the last miscarriage. October 13th. Edwards called today and tried to push me in favor of a business agreement that we made months ago. I rejected his request since it will breach the trust agreement between our companies. I didn't expect him to threaten me by backing out from supporting Charles. If that'll happen, so be it. I'd rather lose his support than to make deals with people with no integrity. Hmm. I should probably make a note of this. So, back in 1972, I don't know, circa, Edward, who provided funding for Charles' run for mayorship? Question mark? Whoa, terrible spelling. May your ship. Threatened to pull out of the deal because Vivian didn't agree to uh, some bullshit. I need some new tags for this one. Vivian. So, Charles is the husband, right? Was, is it Charles or Roberts? Pretty sure. I don't have one here for Charles, do I? No. Charles Roberts and Edward. Key with an exquisite design. It is so fancy. But what's it do? I don't think this needs a key. No, a key's far too big. Usually designed to be used with villas and mansions. Okay. Well, that needs a note, too. I have a key from the mansion next to Vivian's diary. That is fancy and goes to... something. You know, I've got to say, this is... I don't think I've ever encountered this in an adventure game before. It's really unique. My issue is not actually getting keys. It's finding out what they're for. It's such a strange feeling. These are the nasty letters. Oh. How does it feel to ruin the lives of many? So I can't actually read them, read them. I can only do this. Something someone cost me the job. Heartless witch, you don't deserve to live. Interesting. Cost them a job. Oh. Maybe that's what the fancy key's for.
try all the keys. Not literally all the keys. Still says it's for a house entrance. Still wouldn't make any sense for it to be for this. Uh, I was gonna say something, but I forgot. Oh. Right, something about costing me the job. So whose job could Vivian have ruined? At the moment, I guess we don't know, but I mean, I wonder if Edwards tried to do more shady stuff and maybe she blew the whistle or maybe something at the hospital. Nelson and Brown investigation. Regarding investigation on Paints Creek Community Hospital donation funds. Ooh, okay, this might be it. Dear Mrs. Vivian Roberts, our latest investigation shows that Dr. Henry Johnson has been embezzling funds from the Roberts Relief Foundation, which was established for Paints Creek Community Hospital to an offshore private account under the name of Jefferson Investments, LLC. Every fifth of the month, an exact amount of $9,990 is being transferred, supposedly for the payment of medical supplies and equipment. However, neither the equipment nor the medical supplies could be accounted for. This has been going on for the past 16 months, as of now the total amount being embezzled nears 160000 So Dr. Henry Johnson has been embezzling. Well, I'm guessing that's the person who wrote the letters. Also, that amount, $9,990, transferred every month. I'm guessing it's that amount to get basically as much as possible without setting off any alarms with the transfer. I've never looked into this, but it's something that I've heard is that any transfer that's $10,000 or over has to undergo like special scrutiny. So if it's under that, then it kind of can just fly under the radar a little bit easier. Don't know if that's actually true, but I've heard it. Okay. This needs a note. Dr. Henry Johnson was embezzling funds from the... I'll just say embezzling funds. Doesn't matter too much where it's from. Uh, Vivian had proof of this from the investigator that they hired. Investigator. What should I tag this with? Obviously Vivian. I guess Dr. Henry Johnson, right? Now, uh, let's look back at the game. Let me see if it's in my documents. Didn't a doctor die in the, like, the car that was found in the water? Is this the same person? It is. Huh. Well, something shady is going on there, but I... Doesn't seem like Vivian would be the one to have murdered him, right? I mean, why would you murder somebody for embezzling $160,000? It's a little bit... odd. Especially when you have proof that they embezzled from an investigator. Story of Tanti. Whoa. Is this the supernatural elements in this game? So, what object do you put in here? There's so many things to unlock in this game. It feels like I'll never be able to unlock it all. Trisha's, Trisha's room. This is maid room. But I think I've already been in there. I have the key to the nanny's room, but I don't think maid room and nanny's room is the same thing. 
Let's go to Trisha's room. Everything's locked. <sighs> Trisha requested that all her books be brought to her room in the hospital. Wait, she was in the hospital? It's the first time I can recall hearing about that. Oh, it's such a cute key. Oh, it's a key to the cabin, Scott's cabin. All right. God, I have so many keys. I love it, but it's also a tremendous amount of responsibility. Have the key to the cabin. Should add cabin is, cabin in as a label. I'm sure I'm going to be finding stuff there. Oh, this needs to be colored. November 13th, 1988. Scott's a strange kid. Very quiet. I don't think it's right for the, um... It's right for the other boys to bully him and call him names. I wonder why Scott's parents didn't want him. <laughs> I wonder why Scott's parents didn't want him. Is I'm not sure how, how old Trisha was at this time, but... Do they not realize that... People don't only go into orphanages because parents don't like them, right? There's other reasons, too. I don't like after-school programs, especially ballet. It's difficult and boring, and I hate proper etiquette. What's wrong with me being myself? Don't need to be like Mom. Haven't seen Dad for a while. Wonder when he'd be back. Every time I enter the study room, I could smell his tobacco smell. It reminded me of him. I miss Dad. Mom's always working. She's so busy with other people that she has no time for me. Sometimes I wonder if Mom loves me. Maybe I should call Dorothy Mommy instead. Study room code 44871. 44871. Whoops. Wrong button. 44871. Study room code. Code. And I still remember the talk about secret compartments in the mansion. Where? That's a nasty mirror, what the hell?
think we're done here. Okay, let me go check real quick. Uh, study room is not here. Let me go check the maid room and make sure that's not the nanny room. Is it here? No, that's... Dorothy's room? Dorothy's room. That wouldn't be... what the house key's for, right? I mean, again, that's not a house. Nah, it's gotta be for Bernard's place. Yeah, it's just the servant's room. Or maid room, as it says. Okay, so two places downstairs. Unfortunately, I don't have a map for downstairs. So, I'd have to try a bunch of different doors. I'm also not sure where the locked doors are. Oh, here's one. So, it's either this one... Or this one? Oh, that's the fancy key. Oh. Ah, this is where the room key for Stephen Moss's place is on the ground, right? 201? There it is. Whoops. It looks like there might have been a struggle or something. So many keys. Or passwords. I have key. I have key for room 201 in a hotel. Uh, Moss's place. I just want to keep this straight for a second just by looking at them visually. So this is the one to the place at 7 Pebble Lane or something. This is for Bernard's place, probably. This is for Nanny's room. And we know what these are for. Okay. Secret compartment? Uh. Sure looks like that can be pulled, but I can't. Vivian Roberts' diary. Monday, January 2nd, 1994. Andrew came and told me he did not need an assistant. He said Scott is too inexperienced and is a burden to him. What he didn't realize is that the garden has not been maintained well over the past few months, that his drunk behavior is irritating, and that Scott is actually doing more work than him. Scott's a fast learner. He should be up to speed in no time. Charles was the one who insisted on hiring him anyways. Charles likes the boy. They've been hunting together quite a number of times, and Charles always seemed happy with his company. I just don't understand his love for hunting. He sometimes spends more time in his hunting cabin than he does at home. 
January 3rd. I was shocked to learn that Scott has been asking around about Sophia. How did he know about Sophia? Who could have told him? It must be Andrew, that drunk. I told him Sophia is gone. That hallucination of his is getting worse. He needs to see Henry and get more pills. I will need to have Bernard keep an eye on Scott. From now on, I need to know who he might have talked to. Wait, what? Who the hell's Sophia? That drunk. I told him Sophia is gone. That hallucination of his is getting worse. Okay. She makes it, uh, Vivian makes it sound like it's a hallucination, but then at the same time says they need to keep an eye on him and see who Scott talks to. Like she's worried about him knowing about Sophia, so something's up with Sophia. She doesn't just believe that it's a hallucination. There's obviously something Vivian doesn't want other people to know. Who is Sophia? Um... Andrew told Scott about them. Vivian doesn't want anyone to know uh, about Sophia, but said that Sophia is gone. Andrew... Vivian, Scott, and let's add a new one for Sophia. April 8th, 1994. I called Oliver and asked if he could be the main photographer for the Easter fundraising event. When he asked what funds will be used for, I told him it would be used to raise awareness for Paints Creek as a way to promote our town's tourism. After listening, he agreed to help. When asked how much he would charge, he simply said it will be free. I was surprised. At the same time, I appreciate his contribution for this town. The deal with Howard Medical came through, just as I anticipated. Instead of being happy, I feel empty. Am I getting numb from work? Or is it that I don't care anymore? Oh, so Howard Medical must be the Howard... Vivian talked about previously. April 8th, uh, our dinner tonight was quiet. Charles didn't eat much. He asked me about my day, but I didn't want to talk about it. As a matter of fact, I didn't want to talk to him. Uh, I didn't want to talk to him much these days. Trisha was quiet as well. She's di distancing herself from me. I can feel it. She used to confide in me about everything. Now we hardly talk. Is stopping her from seeing Scott wrong? July 6th. I don't want Trisha to be near Scott anymore. Of all the men in this world, why would Trisha pick on him? This is unacceptable. Pick on him? I, I know what they're trying to say. Why would Trisha pick him? But pick on makes it sound like Trisha's bullying Scott. Pretty sure Trisha was not. Ooh. Oh, that must be for the thingy. The clock. I'm going to live dangerously and not put a note for that. Mostly used for locking musical boxes and wall clocks. Oh. Um, could it work for the one in Trisha's room too, then, as well as the clock? it looks like. Where does that lead to exactly? That's the second floor. I'm not sure what's over there. Okay. Um, 
So Trisha's room and tea room. So back up to the second floor. supposed to be at uh, 320. And I remember mentioning tea time was 320 sharp. Like, Vivian was very particular about it being 320. So. Mm, that's 320? It's weird, sometimes you press this and it does nothing. Like, back one, nothing. Back one, forwards one, nothing. Forwards one. Odd. Aha, uh -huh. 320. June 18th, 1975. Dear Vivian, I'm not writing to you as your doctor, but as a friend, I know you had your suspicions about Charles. Now that his affair is revealed, there is no point going around the bush. If you want to protect yourself and Trisha, there is only one choice. You have to make Sophia and the baby leave Charles. Okay, so Sophia is the person Charles had an affair with, and there's a baby. They need to be away from Payne's Creek. You will, of course, have to compensate for her leaving. As for Charles, he will need to know that having his affair publicly known will destroy his political status. People are not so forgiving when the mayor they trust is involved in a scandal. I think Charles will try to... add the baby into the family register? What? I would do so if I were him. It is a boy after all and the child will be able to continue the family line if that should happen I cannot imagine what will happen to you I just got a horrible thought oh my god is is Scott Trisha's half brother Oh, fuck, I think Trish... I, oh, God, I think they're related. Remember how Scott's past was... murky. Scott said they found something... Scott said they found something at the orphanage they came from, and... And somebody investigating Scott, I think, said that something doesn't add up about their past. Scott doesn't know their parents. And that's why Charles is so fond of Scott. Oh, God. Well, I hope, um... I hope Scott and Trisha's relationship didn't get too... romantic. <clears throat> wow, this is big. Vivian, I've given... Uh, careful thought to your request, and here's my answer. I provided a new prescription for your mother-in-law, Magdalene. It is three times the strength of her usual dosage. Detailed instructions will be sent with the medicine. Should you decide to do it, you will need to administer the medicine carefully so no one suspects anything. Call me if you have any questions. Make sure no one else in your family intake any of it. What the fuck kind of a doctor is this? Christ. Henry Johnson. So that would be the doctor that ended up at the bottom of a lake in their car for 15 days, right? Just to double check. 
Yep, that's Henry Johnson. Need to administer the medicine carefully so no one suspects anything. Call me if you have any questions. Also, make sure no one else in your family intakes any of it. So, who was in the family that was. That's implying that someone in the family is going to intake some of it. Who? Did they kill Sophia or something? What the fuck? All right, well, <laughs> this needs uh, many notes, or one big note, I'm not sure. Okay, uh, Dr. Henry Johnson. The person who ended up at the bottom of a lake, dead, in their car was in on a plan with Vivian to deal with Sophia and the baby. He provided an extra strong medicine to poison someone All right, and I also need to edit this, obviously. Oh, I didn't tag anyone in the other note. Sophia is the person Charles Roberts had an affair with. Also had a baby. Baby is Scott. I'm just going to state that definitively because I'm like 99% sure. Alright, let's tag this. Henry Johnson. Vivian. Sophia. Let's make a new one for poison. Well, poison or drugged, I mean, I'm not exactly sure what it was. I don't know if the point of it was to kill them. I'll just say poison. I feel like I'm blowing this case wide open. Alright, well, I can't take it back, so I guess it's not meant for the musical box in Trisha's room. So, like, was that Vivian's daily routine? Tea at 3.20? And then read that note about Sophia and poisoning someone? Was that their daily routine? <laughs> Pretty grim. Okay, so the only key we have left for the mansion itself is the one for the nanny's room, which is somewhere downstairs. Okay, where are locked doors? Wait. No, there's another one. I also have a password to the study room, which I think might be this, actually. One, two, three, four, five. Wait, I think the code for the study room is... Three, four, oh, no, it is five. Four, four, eight, seven, one. Yep. Here's the study room. First floor. I 
don't see Nanny's room. Oh, I guess it's probably marked as maybe like, what was it, Dorothy's room? Or Magdalene's room? Maybe they're in the nanny. I'll need to check that. Illustrated Medical and Health Encyclopedia. What does that say? It's a combination. One right, six left, three right. Right, left, right. That's a padlock combination. Whoops. Four, six, three. Four right, six left, three right. Uh, padlock combo found in study in mansion. To do. Mansion. Right, because I wouldn't apply to something like this. The whole left, right, left. That's how a padlock works, not one of these. I've encountered so many of these, and so far I've solved literally none of them. I really am, like, fairly sure that the initial numbers they start out with is the hint. Like, I don't know, 87, that's probably a freaking birth date or something. I need to figure him out at some point. Huh? What the hell? Payne's Creek Community Hospital. The Vivian Roberts Medical Report. Uh, Dear Charles Roberts, Vivian's situation is currently more stable. She has accepted the fact that she cannot conceive anymore. However, she needs time to fully recover, and a six-month rehabilitation is necessary. Your presence at the hospital is upsetting her, resulting in her prolonged recovery. I suggest that you refrain from visiting her until she's more receptive of you. Your mother's desire for a boy to be an heir to your family has caused tremendous strain on her. Please consider addressing this issue with your mother. Payne's Creek Community Hospital regards a patient's recovery as the highest priority. Our staff will do their very best to help Vivian. I apologize for any inconvenience, blah, blah, blah. And, oh, that's from Johnson. Henry Johnson. Well, given that we know Henry Johnson's involved in this whole plot with Charles and probably poisoning somebody in Sophia, I don't think we can trust any correspondence from him between anybody but Vivian. 1974. Must be the miscarriage, right? Or a miscarriage. <laughs> so two chest pieces. Chest pieces? Yes, the good game of chest. I love playing chest. Two and five. I don't see why this would work. Yeah, why, why, why would that work? Huh. Make a note of those. Two and five on two chess pieces. Chest. 
Should that be a to-do? Yeah. It's got to be related to a password. Okay, so now I just need to go to the nanny's room. Could be this, but I feel like I tried to use the key on this already. No, no I didn't. So yeah, that would be Dorothy's room, so Dorothy is the nanny. January 31st, 1996. Dear Charles, I've worked here for more than 20 years and glad that I could be here with everyone. I appreciate the opportunity to care for Trisha, your daughter. Trisha was everything to me. She was always lonely when you and Vivian were away, but she loved me. She smiled whenever I called her. I wish I could give her more. Despite what happened in Payne's Creek, there were moments when we were all happy. I will hold on to those memories. I'm sorry that I'm leaving and won't be able to serve you anymore. Thank you for everything. Please take care of yourself, Dorothy. October 9th, 1994. Can't believe that Andrew tried to kill himself again. Thank God for Scott. Cannot imagine what would have happened if Scott wasn't there to save him. Wow. Andrew was never like that when Laura and Daniel were here. Even as his wife, I doubt if Laura had any idea why Andrew turned out this way. I can't blame her for leaving him with their son. Wait, leaving them with their son? What, Scott? I'm confused, because originally I thought Scott was Andrew's son, and then after going to the church, I realized that it's, uh, what is it, Matthew? Brooks? The pastor? Is the person who adopted him? Uh, what if they contacted each other since then? I visited Andrew at the hospital today. He seemed different. He looked calm, as if he had somehow managed to find peace within himself. The attending nurse said Scott was here almost every day, taking care of him and being with him. Andrew talked a lot with Scott. Andrew told me he's ready to see Laura and Daniel again. I'm glad to hear that. I should call Laura and tell her the good news. Okay, so I think Daniel's the kid. This is next year. February 13th, 1995. Scott came to fix my leaking sink today. He did a wonderful job. I offered him tea and we talked quite a bit, mostly about Charles and Vivian. I showed him my old photo album. To my surprise, Scott became very quiet. He asked me if he could borrow one of the photographs. I don't see why not. He thanked me and left in a hurry. I should call Laura and tell her about Andrew's situation. A photograph, huh? March 19th. It's ironic that Andrew died shortly after being saved. I met Laura and Daniel at Andrew's funeral today. Daniel reminded me of Andrew. Can't believe he's already 15 years old. Last I saw him, he was only 7. Laura said Andrew has been sending the money these few years. She's been considering to return to Payne's Creek so they could be together again. If only I had called Laura before the fire accident. I feel so sorry to them. Photo of Dorothy and Trisha years ago. Not 
it's teasing me. It looks like you can open this, but you can't interact with it. Two diaries. This is back in 1972. There's a newly hired maid named Sophia. Ah, Sophia was an old maid, huh? Old maid doesn't sound right. Sophia was a maid a while ago. I think Matthew recommended her, saying that she's his cousin. She's very pretty and has very good manners. She's a quick learner, too, and does whatever she's being told. She's also very curious, asking a lot about what she should do, how she should act when Charles and Vivian are present, and how to be a good servant. I like her already. The guys delivering food to the mansion were gawking at Sophia as if they've never seen a pretty girl before. I had to ask Sophia to go back into the house, otherwise someone might have funny ideas. Matthew would sometimes come over and check to see if Sophia was doing okay. I would tell him, he, tell him he's worrying too much and that Sophia is being loved by us all. Matthew seemed pleased. If I didn't know better, I'd have thought Matthew liked her. It rained heavily today. Sophia and I were having our tea break when she asked me, what does it feel to be loved? I said, well, it's like the feeling you get when you're with your parents. She was quiet for a moment and then replied, it's hard for me to imagine because I don't have parents. I didn't know what to say to her at that time. But after the break was over, I decided to make effort to care for her more. Yep, now I'm like 99.9% .9 certain that Scott is uh, the child of Charles and Sophia. Because Matthew recommended Sophia. She's her... He's... She... Uh, Vivian is Matthew's cousin. Did I just say Vivian? Sophia is Matthew's cousin. So, recommended Sophia, then Sophia has the baby. And then I guess she's told to get rid of it, or whatever. And ends up back with Matthew. I should probably note that, actually. Sophia is Matthew's cousin. Coison. Um, was a maid at the mansion. Sophia and Matthew. And mansion, I guess. That is such a tiny trash can. Wow. Okay, so I think that's it for keys for the mansion. Yes. Okay. Well, I think this is a pretty good place to end this episode. So I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, I am going to... Oh, it even says book used to unlock a puzzle. Makes it very clear. Something written on the back. Anyway, I'm going to go to... Well, I guess either the hotel to go to Stephen Moss's room. Or the cabin. Or... Go to... Forgot the exact address, but I have it written down. Bernard's place, as I think that key is for. So I've got kind of three major areas to go. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and I'll be back soon.